Hello, today I'm going to talk about uh, the philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein and I'm going to burst the AI bubble. Um, AI has become a subject of massive amounts of speculation and wild, really wild ideas about what we can achieve with the inanimate objects that we fashion together as human beings. AI in recent years has been subject to the speculation of the idea that machines will one day become self-conscious, self-aware, um, sentient. They will become, not only that, they will become so intelligent that they would subsume all other forms of life in, in their intelligence, right? This idea that they would completely surpass um, human intelligence and AI would take on this godlike power um, over all, all other life on earth. Um, and there's even a, a religion that was started in, in California, of course, um, that, that, would, that aims to worship this future um, god of AI. Now, there's, there's a big problem with that. And the problem is not about the quantitative ideas of intelligence. It's a philosophical point that was made by Wittgenstein quite a while ago. This idea of AI being um, sentient is, is dates back to the very early days where computing was starting to be developed. And Alan Turing came up with what's called the Turing test, which is where you have some form of dialogue with a machine and if you believe the machine, if you believe that what you're speaking to is another human being, if you're kind of deceived into thinking that you're speaking or in dialogue with, a, with another human being, the machine has actually passed the Turing test. That might be a kind of quite a naive uh, way of putting it, and I'm sure I'll be corrected, but just for the purposes of what I'm going to go through, that is the measure of what's called strong AI, which is where AI becomes super powerful and, and indistinguishable from, from human beings in, in, its kind of, in this kind of measure of intelligence. Now, Wittgenstein came up with what's called the private language argument uh, later in his life. And it's the idea that we're immersed in um, a, 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 a public network called language. Right now, he Wittgenstein himself, at a, around the time that Turing was around, actually wondered if machines could think. Like he actually uh, reasoned about that on the page in in some of his philosophical investigations, and he concluded that they can't. And the reason for that is the private language, what he we call the private language argument, and that actually opens up all kinds of ideas about what language is, what intelligence really is, like what, you know, what do we, what do we mean when we say intelligence, when we say artificial intelligence? And it also brings into question what it actually is to be a human being, to live, to be immersed in this public um, network called language. And the private language argument is probably best summarized in the following sentence. And inner sensation or an inner process stands in requirement of outward criteria right so an inner process stands in need of an outer criteria what Wittgenstein is saying is that how we articulate our inner sensations what, what we do to articulate those inner sensations is only possible through a pub through the public network of language right so language actually makes us it, it enables us to articulate what is going on in our mind and that means that intelligence doesn't actually reside in the brain or the mind the seat of intelligence is not in the brain it doesn't exist in the head the seat of intelligence is actually the connections between us, between our minds, that exist in language. Language exists before us. We, we're born into language. We're born into a world that's already there for us. And, and a whole set of rules and systems that enable us to articulate how we feel, and what we desire, um, and, and how we can get on in the world. And that's a really profound way of looking at how intelligence 
actually works and actually is. Intelligence is embedded in our form of life, right? Machines just simply don't have that capability. Machines are not alive. They're, they're dead by nature. And it's the living nature of human beings that allows us as a form of life to have this interconnection of, of communication that gives rise to human intelligence. And Finkenstein actually said um, another really memorable phrase, which is, if a lion could talk, we would not understand it. So if a lion could actually articulate its desires, its inner sensations, we wouldn't actually understand what the lion's saying because what the lion's desires are, what its inner sensations are, are embedded in the form of life of the lion. So there's this incommensurability between us that, that just simply can't be bridged. So that's the basic idea that, that Wittgenstein comes up with is this idea that, you know, a computer can pass through um, information and it can process information and our brains can do the same and it, it can actually process through sentences, analyze those sentences and come up with a response based on lots of other sentences that it's processed. But it's simply passing through the information. When we use language, we're making up, we're abiding by certain rules and systems, um, but we're also making up those rules as we go along through that commonality that we have by being part of the same life form. And that's a really, it's a really interesting conclusion Wittgenstein came to because when we consider things like morality, um, spirituality, when we think about law, when we think about how we create a better society, we need to think about this idea of the commonality between us, this network that we're immersed in called language, and the fact that we're all part of this same form of life. Now, if you find this idea interesting, I've written an article below, there's a link below um, that you can click on to go to um, a much more in-depth article that I've written about, about this. Um, <clears throat> if you enjoyed this video, if, you, if it made you think at least, um, please like, subscribe, do whatever it is that the YouTube algorithm wants you to do so, um, so that this, you can share this um, video out with, the, with everyone else. Um, I really hope you um, uh, got thinking after listening to this. If you have any comments to make, please do. Thank you so much.